Edge of Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about daily life tips of finding our inner peace and happiness on on a daily basis, and today we're going to be talking about judgment, Um, judging others and being judged and what all that means and how we can cope with that and not lose our inner peace. Nice. So... How are you, Missy? I'm doing You're inside. Good. Yeah, I'm inside. It's nice and cool out, but, you know, um, it's just too muggy still. It's still a little moist and rainy, so I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like dealing with that. So how about you? How are you guys doing? Doing good. Uh, loving the change of the seasons. So I am uh, experiencing autumn, and it's the in the 40s. Uh, Fahrenheit in the mornings and 50s during the day and just a nice crispness to the air yeah nice nice I am enjoying life yeah (laughs) I'm still drinking coffee in the afternoon you know because now it's cool enough to do so oh yeah I haven't had coffee since January like actually since December 31st yeah oh I gave it up for the year and I actually have stuck with it. So yay for me, right? Resolution. Okay. Yay for you. I I don't know why or how, but okay. <laughs> People are like, what's your purpose for living? And I'm like, uh, there's plenty more of than to life than coffee. I enjoy it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it to the degree of purpose of, of life, but um, but I will say for myself, it's like, why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason that computes in my head for this. You know, and I had a meeting yesterday morning and I was up, it was really early and brain function was not 100%. And everybody else is like blaming, oh, it's, you know, I didn't have a head coffee. I need coffee. And I'm like, I don't even have that excuse. Like, I don't know what to say to y'all. Uh, you know, so, but anyway, yeah, it's all, it's all. Although I have read articles that say that drinking water when you first wake up, is yeah. actually more beneficial than coffee in the sense of getting your body going and, and your mind moving that it actually does more than the caffeine does. You know what? So uh, they say. So this that's all I drink, really. This is lemon water, um, but usually that's all I drink all day long. And I might have like this much pink lemonade or lemonade. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, there is this really good um, cherry hibiscus tea that I love, but I can't find anymore mm. because I think it's all stuck out in the Pacific ocean, but uh, probably, um, yeah. um, it's super delicious. And um, yeah, so I really don't have a lot of um, drink other than water throughout my days. Um, mm-hmm. okay. I mean, I, I do like water and, and I do like it with uh, fruit or throw in those flavor drops, you know, that are like zero water. calorie, whatever. Oh so good yeah but um yeah. Yeah, so it's different it's it's you know it's not a big deal no i'm great for you and that, that's a, a wonderful thing to do for this long and you know still be doing it so that that's awesome even if i don't understand it or well you know i probably should add to it that i also gave up alcohol and red meat and pork so that other people understands now that's probably why i get that saying like well, what, what, what do you do? Okay, so I am wondering the purpose of your life now at this point, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, I just try something different, you know, like, like try something different. Hey. That's all it is. 
Well, and I think that's great because, you know, we, we can get into ruts if, if that's what you want to call it. But, you know, shifting things in life, I, I think, is very important and, yeah. you know, can help you to see a whole different side to self and, and to life in general. So, yeah. no, I mean, from a professional viewpoint, I think this is awesome. I mean, personally, I'm like, what are you doing? But <laughs> professionally, I think this is great. It is like awesome oh, yeah. stuff and maybe that could be a whole episode of you know how can you do something the, that extreme yeah well and this is a great conversation opener right for what we're talking about today because this like, is true. judgment is you know like and it can be good or bad judgment is is right or wrong right and we use you use the terms healthy or unhealthy even mm-hmm. you know um it's really the connotation on what we put on whatever subject that we're seeing so um And I understand that there is a challenge or a level of thought about it being a challenge, you know, to do something like this or, but I mean, gosh, I mean, you have people that are, uh, you know, starting businesses every day and and in the middle of of COVID and and everything else that's going on in our economy, like that could be something that could be challenging or even something that we judge, right? Why would you Mm -hmm. do that? Why would you start a, a, a corn shucking business? Well, you know, like, you know, who knows, right? Whatever it is. We could, we could probably make money off of doing just about anything, but I think that's one of the fears that hold us back in life is that we worry about what other people think and we worry about yeah. whether it's going to be accepting of, you know, the sameness of, or the likeness that, that we have with other people, our group, what's our family going to think, what's our friends going to think, what are our, you know, our colleagues going to think. And um, so it kind of, it limits us really is what it mm-hmm. does. Oh, I totally agree. And, and definitely, you know, growing up, I, I think that's part of childhood and, and teen life for most is, is that whole thing of, you know, what do people think about me? Yeah. Um, but it, it's hard to break out of that and in, into adulthood for many, you know, that you, you can go through those teen years in high school and it's all about what people think and, you know, and then you get into, uh, I guess, your early career and you still care about how people think because you're early in your career. Um, and maybe that's natural. Maybe that that's a, a normal, I hate to use that word, you know, thing. But a- as we age and mature, I-, I think that creates more anxiety than it's worth, you know, that we, we need to start understanding that it's more important about what we think of ourselves than, you know, how others are, are going to view us. Well, I, I think you're right. I think it's a societal norm that that happens. And I also think that it's a learned behavior. So we can unlearn it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it, it's like, you know, I use the example all the time. It's, it's a, it's a muscle. So unlearning that behavior is thinking differently about, you know, whatever people, Oh, like, Oh, you're doing something different for yourself. Oh, good for you. Well, way to go. I hope you succeed is totally different than what the hell are you thinking? You know, like, (laughs) and, and, um, you know, when it comes to what you said about, you know, the, the things that we worry about what other people think, we also judge ourselves that same way, you know, and, and I don't want to limit this to just the female population because I definitely see it in a lot of men too, but I know that I'm a female, so I can speak from my perspective and I see a lot of like what I would call maybe body dysmorphic disorder in us females Mm -hmm. perfect we have wrinkles we have zits we have you know maybe our eyebrows aren't filled in properly you know cellulite on our thighs stretch marks from having kids whatever it is and we think that we're unworthy because of those things we think that we're unworthy Mm -hmm. because we're aging when we're just going through the process right and there's things that you can do to um put a veil on it, right? Like, like hide it. We can put makeup on, we can, we can do Botox and fillers and, you know, we can get liposuction and, you know, there's so many things that we can do, but the process is still going to be the process. And eventually it's going to, you know, like, you're not going to have any, without anything else that you can do, um, that won't make you feel like you're yourself anymore. You know, like I, I, Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, I've, I've done Botox, I've, you know, I've had things like that done. And then I realized that, you know, it's me judging myself, like, okay, so I raise my eyebrows a lot. I'm very, very uh, 
animated, right? In my speaking. <laughs> and so who cares if I have wrinkles in my forehead? Who cares if I have laugh lines? I'm happy. Like this is a good thing for, you know, that's that's how you can judge that, right? Um, but we we do it in harshness. We don't do right. it out of love, you know, and out of excitement. We do it out of out of they're different than I am. We're not the same. Right. So, and that's what kind of like makes you feel like judgment is attack. Yeah. Right. And, and it doesn't have to be attack. Um, but I, I think as you were talking that it seems much of judgment in, in general is societal norm. Mm. You know, because I, I can see it creeping also with guys that, you know, are now in, in these generations coming up concerned about appearance and wrinkles and uh, muscle tone and, you know, all of that as they're aging, you know, to be able to say, you know, like, you know, I'm in my 60s, but I look like 40s, yeah. you know, instead of just appreciating the fact, well, you're in your 60s and you look 60s and appreciate that. You, right. you know, that, that that's okay. So I, I think that's part of what takes us away from our happiness and our inner peace, because we're not being aligned with ourselves. Mm. Because if you are a certain age, you may look a certain way and that's just the way it is. And so if you're aligned with that and, and accepting of that, you're going to feel that peace because, well, you are being who you are. Right. Where when we're trying all of these other things to look different or younger or whatever it may be, we're going against what naturally we are. And, and how can we be at peace if we're going against? We're swimming upstream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're swimming. You know, uh, how can that be happiness and peace when, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, well, so... And I think that part of it is, it's like, this is our vessel, right? We take care of our mm -hmm. vessel, then we're going to age gracefully. We're going to have those things. And, and I hate to, like, it's not only about us judging our bodies, right? It's actions, it's circumstances, mm -hmm. it's, it's everything. But in this re regard, what we're talking about is that when you're judging yourself and you're not taking care of yourself like okay so we drink okay we we do drugs we smoke pot we smoke cigarettes you know alcohol is also a drug right maybe we have to take medications for our health right maybe we have to mm -hmm. do those things but then it's like we are combating you know instead of taking care of ourselves properly to begin with we're combating all of those you know and then we we treat ourselves like crap. And then we go do these other things to bring us back to what we think mm -hmm. we should be, which is also judgment on what we think we should be, right? Just, just that right there is like, my expectation of what I am is not what I am. So I need to make it what I am so that I won't hurt so bad. I won't suffer so bad because I'm judging myself for not being what I think I should be. I know and that. two right. very important, <laughs> yeah, no, but that's very true. And, and I think two very important words that you just used in there are words that I work with my clients all the time in um, avoiding. Um, the one was the should, yeah. you know, how, how we should look, how we should feel, how we should act. Yeah. We need to get rid of the should because that's setting up for the next word, the expectation. Yeah. And expectation in and of itself, I don't think is a bad thing, but is the expectation a reasonable expectation? You know, so when we put the should in there, you know, so like at, at my stage of my career or at my age or in my status, whatever it may be, I should blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So is that follow up blah, blahs? Um, uh, is that something that's valid is that something that is attainable or are we looking at what we think society would want us to be given where we are in life and and, and all those things so that that's where that expectation 
And the reason I, I ask clients to get rid of the word should, because you're setting up expectations that are probably unreasonable expectations. And that sets you up for failure. And then again, takes you away from your inner peace, builds anxiety, uh, you know, all of that. So I think the other important piece too is, and then we probably need to get back to even that self-judgment piece. But I think to understand that we are so focused on us because we are us. I mean, how can we not be focused on us? Okay. That then we live in the perception, well, everybody is focused on us. Ooh, very good. And I had a client, well, I've had many of them with this situation, but I, I remember this one in particular who was very self-conscious of how she looked and acted and she was late teens. And we got to the point of saying, you know, when you walk into a restaurant, she always felt everybody's looking at me. And what I tried to work with her about is, you know, in reality, most didn't even notice you walked in the door. Right. You know, because our perception is ourselves. So, well, of course, everybody sees me walking. Of course, everybody's judging what I'm doing, how I look, how I'm acting. But in most cases, you know, and, and think about it for yourselves. You know, how many times are you out in public that you notice people? You know, here and there, sure. But in most cases, yeah. we we don't notice people. Yeah. So, and, and she actually tried that, you know, walked into restaurants and actually looked around and realized that she was looking around that nobody was looking at her. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, you know, her perception always was, well, everyone's looking at me. Right, right. Um, but when she actually looked at people's, you know, heads, like nobody was turned around mm -hmm. to see her walk in that restaurant, you yeah. know, so that that was her perception, not reality. Well, and I, I think that comes from, it comes from the ego really like it comes from the ego saying like you're not safe you're not loved you're not enough you're you're staying let's stay comfortable let's let's come back to our little hole so nobody sees us right and we it, it keeps us small like it keeps mm -hmm. us so that we're right about whatever it is that we're thinking right mm -hmm. and and so like yeah that that late young lady I mean, I'm sure that many people can relate to, to that story, you know, walking in and feeling like, oh yeah. my gosh, everybody's looking at me. I'm so embarrassed or. Oh, I know. relate to that. I, I've, I've been there before. <laughs> right. And, and you're right though, because when you think about it, like you probably, nobody probably noticed her and it's not because she wasn't noticeable. She probably was noticeable, but because she was in that lower vibrational state, maybe most people didn't notice her because they were having good, a good time, you know, enjoying the mm -hmm. family and, you know, things like that. Um, it's really hard to know what other people are going through. Like it yep. really is very hard to know what other people, you know, why they are experiencing what they're experiencing. And um, it's kind of funny. One of the things that like, this has been surfacing for me a lot. So I knew like, this is a great topic for this week, right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so I went to this event and, um, you know, it, it was a very busy event it, and there was only one staff person to serve a probably 30 to 35 people. So understandably, this young lady was upset, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was in judgment because I was going, wow, these people are really giving her a hard time. Like if she didn't know, like she didn't know and she's doing her best, she's one person, right? But the perception on the other you know, and I was being judgy. I, I'll be first to admit, I was like, eh, that's not okay. But they were a little upset because they weren't being serviced, right? Which you come with the expectation that you should have a full staff and you should be able to take care of me. What? right? And so, so I can understand both sides of the tale, you know, and, and I don't know, I guess what it, what it boils down to is, you know, see if there's a different possibility. See if there's yep. another way, like, I, and I call it like the black room that you put a pinprick in so that you can see the light shine in, mm -hmm. right? And, like and so all of a sudden you can go, oh, well, what if there's a different way to look at this and become curious about it? Mm -hmm. Then you start to realize, well, you know, who knows what, well, maybe, maybe that lady's been working like that for days on end and she's just fed up. Who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, nobody told her, management didn't tell her so she could have a full staff. And, you know, you never know what's, what other people are going through. And right. 
again, those people might have been coming in hungry and coming in thirsty and coming in with that expectation. So for me to judge them, you know, again, I'm not going to judge myself, bad, good, right, wrong, but I didn't open up to see if there was a different possibility for them either. Yeah. You know, so, and, and that's a good point because it, it, it's all about perception. Yeah. You know, but we have to remember that our perception is going to lead us to making our judgments. But our perception isn't the only way to look at something. Mm, yeah. You know, like, like I, I remember somebody at um, one of the jobs where I had worked where everybody was complaining because this individual didn't know their job. You know, I mean, they weren't knowledgeable of, of what they were doing. And and it was very frustrating, you know, and, and you see a lot of people judging and then mocking and, you know, all that. And one of the shifts in perspective that, that I had and, you know, noticed was, well, was she trained in her job? Right. Yeah. You know, and, and when you realized who her supervisor at the time was, it's more than likely she wasn't trained properly versus, you know, the mocking of she, you know, can't handle, you know, uh, this duty. Right. Was she actually given a fair shake to handle that duty? Right. So there, there always is other ways to focus, you know, one's judgment. And even on that, I mean, maybe I'm misjudging the supervisor, you know, right. <laughs> Right. There and might be something else going on there that I'm not aware of. But that's it. It's it's a limitless, you know, spiral mm -hmm. of things that we could get into about what we're doing, how we're doing it, who's doing what, when they're doing, you know, like there's just so many things. And does I just hope that our listeners realize, which I'm sure they do because they'll they're brilliant because they listen to us. But anyway, <laughs> um that that you have that ability to just let it be, yeah. let it be. And your awareness to the judgment is really all you need is just that awareness to know, oh God, okay, I noticed I'm judging that. Hmm, okay, you don't have to fix it. You don't have to go back and unjudge it. You can't, you just move forward. And mm -hmm. the more neutral you become about situations, about things like that, about people, the less you become triggered, then you have your inner peace. Exactly. So, I think our listener challenge this week. Oh, listener challenge time. Two weeks, right? Every two weeks we do a podcast. So let's say for the next two weeks, you just sit in your awareness about what you're judging. Because mm -hmm. that is just like, I mean, you can't, no one else knows but you. You're the mm -hmm. only one that's going to know whether you're judging somebody unless you open your mouth and let it all spill. But what, what you have the ability to do in that awareness is just clean it up a little bit and, and just feel better about it because then you recognize that everybody's got things. Everybody's got something that they're dealing with. And um, we don't always know what it's for. You know, their actions, their behavior, their words, we don't know. Yeah. And, and that's really, you know, that good point, you know, that it's easy for us to judge somebody else, but we don't know. And interestingly, you know, we tend to know more about ourselves and especially if you are trying to be self-aware and yet we continue to judge, you know, sometimes in erroneous ways, even about ourselves and, and, you know, we know ourselves. So if we're doing that and we still know ourselves, then yeah, how much more, uh, you know, are, are we possibly doing that to others who we don't even know, you know, what's going on in their life? Um, and it's a you know, and, and Oh yeah. It's just a habit yeah. that we can break. <clears throat> you know, yeah. I had to practice when I first started doing, you know, transformational work is what I like to call it. When I first started doing mm -hmm. transformational work, I was, I was a martyr. I just would beat myself up over everything. And I still recognize that I have those moments, you know, it doesn't yep. happen. Thankfully it doesn't happen as often as I did, but you know, I still have those moments where I'm being really hard on myself, where I should on myself. And I go, why am I, why am I still that way? I should be better than this by now. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not, it doesn't harm anybody else when I do that, but then my attitude changes, my behavior changes. And that really does change my destiny. It changes the way that I'm moving forward in the future, right? right. And so 
I, I just, you know, be gentle on yourself, treat yourself mm-hmm. like you would your own best friend. And, and that's, yeah. that's probably one of the best pieces of advice somebody ever gave me. And just, you know, try to remember that. Yep. I, I would totally agree. And the only thing I would add with that is when you say that that internal attitude isn't harming anyone, it's probably not as far as harm goes, but it's affecting others. Oh, yeah. It's like you said, then your attitude changes, which means the way you respond to others has changed based on that attitude, which is going to change them. (laughs) So, yeah, it's it's going to uh, affect others. Yeah. And Domino, you know, because now they're upset and then they're going to be upset with somebody else. And, you know, it just. Yeah. No, you're um, right. You're right. And like I said, I get snippy. And when I am like, I even try when I'm in a negative headspace, I even try to remember my kids will come up to me. I'm like, it's not you, but not right now. You know, like, because if, if I start to have a conversation with you, this is not going to be, you know, this you'll mm-hmm. think I'm upset with you and I don't want that. So um, sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't, but you know, it's uh, definitely all come a lot comes from that judgment. Which I think is also a a good lesson for all of us that when people get snippy with us or, you know, seemingly upset at us or whatever is part of that is to shift your perspective that it may have nothing to do with you. Again, it goes back to ego. You know, of course, everything's got everything to do with me. Yeah. But just because somebody's snippy at you doesn't mean they're upset at you. Yeah. You know, it could be somebody else. It could be the universe. It, it could be nothing. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be you. So, but we so always think it's us. Here's that attack right there. Do you see that? Like, that's the attack is because we do think that someone's attacking us, you know, mm-hmm. and and it's, it could not be, it could be that like, you know, you're waving the white flag going, Hey, no, I I'm throwing in the towel, you know, like, I, I don't know what happened here or we could get angry and judge them. Right. We judge them and then we get angry and we attack back. So yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's when it crazy. never had anything to do with us in the first not a thing, not a thing. Yeah. And usually in life, that's how it is. You know, again, we go back to that client of mine, you know, and in in reality, when we think that everybody's watching us and judging us and thinking these things in reality, there's probably one or two people. Yeah. And I was just thinking loved ones when I said one or two, (laughs) you know, I, most of of society probably doesn't even know that you exist. Sorry, but it's probably that way. Well, and look, and that, that, that's part of what makes us think that we're special, right? And that we're different, which also comes from that judgment, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's a brilliant, brilliant uh, thought, Chris. Uh, that took me many, many decades. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love uh, of now being at my age to be able to say, I don't care what you think. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Unless you're a close friend or a loved one, you know, that that's different. I, I care about what you think. But uh, as far as society, it's like, yeah, you know, my wife says you're going out dressed like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah actually, I am. <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> you know, and it's funny that you say that because it's like, you know, we 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 don't need to get to this age in our lives to have that. Right. You know, mm-hmm. normally your parents taught you and their parents taught them. And then this is just the way that that it evolved. But, you know, you you don't have to get to this point in your life to where you've you, I would say suffered. Right. You suffered so much that you've decided <laughs> that's not working. Let me try something different, you know. And um, so it's just a thought again, yep. just to open up your perception to see if there's something something new, something different that you can mm-hmm. see. And, and again, you know, most people don't care. <laughs> you know, again, I mean, that, that's just coming back to the, you know, like, are you going out dressed like that? It's like, I will bet you if you poll people, most didn't even see the way I was dressed. Right, right, right. So and there's going to be yeah. one or two that are go, did you see that guy? <laughs> well, exactly. That's going to be and for them. I'm going to say, like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. And, and I guess to me is like, because I've, I've been probably that person. It's like, I'm glad I provided you with entertainment. Like that's mm-hmm. awesome. That I mean, because there have been situations that I have been in and I'm like, I hope I gave everybody a great laugh today. Like that's, that's important, you know? And 
again, just a different way to look at it. Like I could go home exactly. in my feelings and be hurt and everybody laughed at me, or I could be like, that's awesome. I provided entertainment today, you know? And that's honestly, that's what makes things memorable. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you, oh. even, what did For you have me, yeah. last week, right? Or, or, you know, do you remember that time we went so-and-so and the so-and-so happened and, you know, whatever. And then you're like, man, that was so fun. You know, like, God, that was great. That's memorable. So. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll bet you at some point I, I can tell my grandkids some of those stories and they'll look at me and say, you are just really silly. And I'll say, thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. But again, you know, for people listening and saying like, well, how do you do that? You know, it takes time, yeah. you know, because again, that that wasn't my life, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I cared and really thought that everybody else did, too. Yeah. And, you know, that that has taken seriously decades, you know, to get to a point where I can now say this in, in all honesty that I really don't care. And we do. But about ourselves, not about you. <laughs> Right. And that's, that's it. Like, so, you know, like, I don't know, mm -hmm. I got this, I got this mental image that we'll all care one day, right. You know, one day we're all going to care, not about what you look like or what you wear or anything like that, but we gen genuinely care about yeah. other people. And, um, and that would be that, nice. Yeah. And we'll hold that space. Like, that's what I think that work like this does, you know, mm -hmm. having and putting this information out there. That's what that does is it's, it gives people a new opportunity to look at things in a different way and to have a, a happier life, um, a more peaceful life. That's the goal. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you. Okay. It, it was fun as always. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, okay, we'll sure. see how the listener challenge works. Yeah. And uh, so please leave comments and let, let us know what you're, what you're doing on, on listener challenge and how it's working for you. Absolutely. And thank you guys all so much for listening. All right. Have a good one. You too.